Hi everyone, Junior Joe here. So in this video, we set up a basic uh, functionality for our key logger. So for those who don't know what a key logger is, it basically records the strokes that the user is being uh, typing, and then proceeds to send it uh, usually via a so-called backdoor. Basically, it creates a server on the machine that the user is typing, and then it sends the keys that's been typed via a port, and then uh, to a client which is listening, which uh, could be a malicious uh, client, in this case a hacker that is recording the keys that being typed, uh, usually for trying to get passwords, that kind of thing. So. Yeah, we're learning how the, one of those works, basically. Uh, so essentially what it is, uh, is a functionality that we did in the past video. If you don't have watched it, I would strongly recommend to watch that we use this uh, Go hook library. And then we set up a basically listener for the key loggers, for the keys being typed and the key strokes. And uh, you can see here, uh, let me show you basic. So, yeah, it will require basically every type somewhere else. So, it records every key that I'm typing. Yeah. So, that's basically how it works. And also, if I press enter space, it detects also. So, yeah, that part of the keylogger we did this functionality. So, uh, it starts a channel and then uh, it loops for every event. And then the maps, uh, kind of the events that it's a key down. And then, depending on its goal, it detects if the space, enter. And then if it's a char, it uh, converts here to stream. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So on this video, we're going to write the uh, HTTP server part. And we'll be using on the server side uh, and also the client side UDP protocol. So we set up a basic UDP server and that will send uh, the keys being pressed in UDP packets. Why UDP instead of TCP? Because UDP is much faster for that kind of thing. Uh, it will tend to record uh, send things faster uh, because it doesn't require all the handshakes, uh, send packets, and uh, act package that the TCP requires. And so for um, a highly throughput uh, stream, uh, UDP is more recommended, but it, it could be a TCP server. Uh, so we do uh, doing everything localhost. And before we go on, it's important to uh, note that uh, it's, it's not recommended that you test this on machines that you're not authorized to. Well, in this case, I'll be testing on localhost, uh, releasing, applying keylogger to myself, so there's uh, no third parties involved. So don't try this um, in computers you're not allowed to or may uh, be sued or under uh, legal process and so on. So without further ado, let's go on and set up our server. So the first thing we need to do is set a UDP address. So for that, uh, let's call this UDP address and we'll be going to use net.resolve uh, uh, UDP address so this function takes basically uh, two arguments and return a net.udp address uh, type so that word string is uh, UDP and the address that we're going to use uh, is localhost so it will be uh, to 7.0.0.1 and the port we're using 6969 
And uh, yeah, this function returns a net .udp address and an error. So that. So if error is not equal to new, I think we can uh, panic. I guess. Uh, yeah, we're going to need to terminate execution. So panic, and then we pass in address. And uh, yeah, now that we have the UDP address set, we can uh, create a connection handler. So actually, you will turn an error. And for that, we're going to use net dot connect. I think uh, it's dial dial UDP. So the UDP acts like a dial for UDP networks. The network must be UDP network name C. So let's check the dial function. So the dial connects to the address on the name network. And yes, yeah, so dial connects to the address on the name network. So we will be using UDP and of course we'll be having already a UDP address. So here it takes the same uh, network, which is UDP. So here a local address, uh, I think we can set it to nil. I'm not sure about that. Because here we have a UDP net.udp and then local address and yeah I think we said this new then local address that must be chosen if the IP field of our address is new or unspecified IP address the local system is assumed. So I think we set up this node for new and then we use your UDP address. So now we have a connection handler. And uh, of course, here we also uh, check if the error is new. And then if the error is not new, we call lockdown panic. And here we call deferred connection uh, closed. And now that we have the connection, we can actually write uh, to this connection. And I think it's mostly done. So yeah, we write to whatever connects this connection yeah, inside this loop. So once we're inside this loop, we'll keep listening to events on this channel. And here, of course, we are logging here the keys being pressed. And we can uh, use connection dot oops connection that send uh, I think here right yeah we're gonna be writing a uh, first we need a uh, slice of bytes here and we're going to be passing in uh, the char rest so we create the UDP address, we create a connection, uh, and then we keep listening until we are done here, press Ctrl C and exit. Uh, as for the client, so this is the server side, as for the client, uh, basically we do the uh, same thing here, we create a UDP address and uh, yeah once we have the UDP address we also need to create a connection and uh, we check for an error but instead of dial in UDP we will check for I think uh, listen UDP so we will listen to that address on the UDP network and uh, yeah and that's UDP 
Keep passing the IP address. Okay. And also we check if the error is not equal to new. And I think we can call here connection. Close. And uh, yeah, we need to create a infinite or rope here to keep listening for uh, for the data is being sent. So let's create or also we're going to be needing a buffer. So I'll create here buffer uh, of bytes. So it'd be a slice of bytes here. And uh, yeah, going to set up like here a const first uh, so let's set it to 1024 bytes I think it's good and so here uh, our buffer so I think we can create we can allocate memory on the heaps so we create a heaps make to create a, a, a heap a slice of bytes of size uh, prefer size. What's this complaint here? Expected type. Um, what's this the issue here? Ah, two. Prefer size. Okay, so now we have the buffer that we're going to use. And now we need to keep listening and uh, writing data to this buffer. So we're going to use an, uh, a function, I think it's called uh, reads from reads. Read. Read. No. that. Oh, it's yeah we have the connection and then, and then we read from UTP and uh, yeah here we pass read from the PX like read from but returns a UDP address okay so is this Correct. Yeah, so I think this B is the buffer. And the returns, let's see here. Uh, and I presume that's the number of bytes read. I think we will probably be needing that. And then check number of bytes, address, which I think we don't need and the error. And uh, now that we have, uh, actually, actually, we need to check if the error is not between you. And I think we can break from the loop, I believe, or we panic. I think we can panic for now and then uh, break the error. So if n is greater than zero, then uh, then we print the message, I guess. And uh, actually, the buffer because the data is being written to the buffer. So if n is oops, n is greater than zero, then uh, we print uh, n of that print line e buffer. Is I, I think this is pretty much it. So I, I'm not sure if they need. Actually, we could print something like we uh, receipt, and then uh, we print it like that. I believe we need. We don't need to read the whole buffer. Like we need to read only uh, until this. Uh, this end here. So we are locating here 
actually here we could set like a minimum size and then a max size and then we read uh, until n because we don't need to read the rest of so the buffer could be like garbage there so yeah we need we read until n i think we got mostly set up and i think we are now uh, ready to test it and here we'll change to the client and then the server going to be hiding this here so i think we can so here on the left i have the server and on the right i have the client and yeah let's start the server go run server go uh yeah this is a bug i was getting last time i'm not sure about that so let's start the client program. yeah it seems to be working client.go and uh let's type something here a b c d e yeah it's not reaching the client maybe it should start with max birth size here so yeah so yeah we should start like a max size and so it's working we got uh, yeah we got the keys being locked here so yeah that's pretty much it uh but how would one uh, like protect against keylogger besides not downloading and executing uh binary sets you are unsure about its origin and such but one way to circumvent this for example to for avoid the hacker stealing your password for example if you type here username and then password so as you can see here the hacker would have your password so one, one way to do is for example uh control c control v because if you have if you like copy and paste a password from a password manager it, depending on the keylogger of course you will avoid that your password is like detected in a keylogger but more sophisticated keyloggers are unfortunately are able to capture data from your clipboard so they keep observing that part of the memory where the data from the clipboard is stored or some apps uh, send notifications uh, sort of notifications to your operating system and then capture your password in that manner but less sophisticated keyloggers won't be able to uh, capture a password so and of course you have at some point type your master password for the password manager so yeah that password ideally it should be different than the rest of your password so but yeah, that's pretty much how I heal our works. Uh, hope you guys liked this tutorial. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment.